before, before we get started, just a little introduction. Yes. This is my friend Jeffrey. Uh, I commonly refer to him as Badger because it's good to have a Badger around. Um, he's asked me to help him out with a coming uh, show where he wants to uh, learn how to smoke a cigar. So I've pulled out some accoutrement. We're going to sit here and we're going to do some tr uh, teaching on what it is about smoking a cigar so that he feels comfortable on screen. Since we're already on screen. The feature film, if I can't do this, then I'm going to be a supporting role. And I don't, I, I'd rather be the lead. <laughs> the supporting role. I'm hoping he comes out weekly so that we can have a cigar together and that way he'll get real comfortable with it. That's a possibility. Yeah. I, might have to I might have a new cigar buddy here. Hopefully. <laughs> but, you know, first off, what I want to talk about is guillotines. Snipping the cigar. Okay. When you cut the cigar, you're going to want to get cut only a very small portion of the top. All right. This is a uh, torpedo shaped cigar. Okay. Where it comes to kind of a point on one end, right? Yeah, exactly that. You know, like a torpedo going through water. And with this kind of a cigar, you don't have to worry much, too much about the cap. The cap is on a regular cigar where it's more rounded. All you're trying to do with that is cut off the cap with the guillotine. Right? Essentially, it makes a smaller version of the outside where this correct. Goes. But you don't want to get it too far up on the torpedo, or the tobacco that's in there will start naturally coming out. Yeah. So right. you want to make sure it's just enough to be able to draw enough smoke out of, just as little enough to uh, make sure that you get so you know, like almost smoke, not tobacco. Yeah. No, uh, they do have other cutters, uh, uh, other ways of uh, uh, starting the uh, cigar. They've got the punch, which is um, a round circle where you punch it in and then when you pull it out, it pulls uh, a whole divot out of the uh, cigar, so you got a little hole in there. And they also have a needle kind of thing, which you know, you push it in and you pull it out and it makes a hole. I personally prefer cutting um, when I'm smoking with those other two kinds. I find that my saliva kind of gets up in here and it starts becoming flavored with, and it just, you know, towards the end of the cigar, and I like smoking the cigar at the bitter end. I don't like it to be that bitter. Right. Okay. So that's the guillotine. Personally, this is a V cut. All right. It's a little bit different. So you can see there's a little notch in here and it's going to cut a V so that there's a section cut out like this. There's two reasons why I like this one better. All right? To me, this draws a better smoke. Okay. All right? But the second reason is because it cuts into it at an angle and it has a stop point. Right? Oh, okay. Cool. Right? So it only goes so far with the guillotine. You can go right through. And you can practice That's why it's used for mob movies where they cut off people's fingers. Right, exactly. <laughs> But with the V cutter, I smoke a lot more in the car. So being able to keep my eye on the road while going like this, creating a V cut is always a good thing. Oh, okay. you know? And because I've cut it like this, I still have the same amount of coverage to get the smoke out of. But it's at a V, so the tobacco is going to spend more time inside the cigar and not inside my mouth. Okay. Right? Now, should we get you a guillotine or should we get you a, a V cut? Oh, uh, we'll probably start with the V cut, I guess, if that's a better draw. I so you just take the uh, that end on the oh, into the little the other side. Oh, at this side? Yes. Oh, okay. It's like a cradle in there. Or it's something perfect. else that you probably shouldn't say on it. Yeah, you don't want to cut the tip off of that. Oh, I see. there you go. So cut that, and just kind of drop the uh, the bits into the ashtray. Okay. Now, lighting the cigar. There's several different ways, of course, of lighting a cigar. Okay. Some people use everything from matches. To Zippo lighters to butane lighters. Okay, the Zippo lighters are frowned upon because the gas that goes into them the butane. has a flavor to it. Oh. It, it, it's the Zippo fluid, so it's more oily. So when it's burning, um, people have said that you can taste the flavor into the cigar. It changes the flavor of the cigar, and butane is just a much cleaner fuel. All right. So butane lighter, and then there's matches. Now when I do matches. I prefer to do cedar matches because they have you know, a better scent to them, a better feel to them. They burn for longer so you can get the whole thing in one shot. But you don't have to use it. Okay, if you have a lot of matches lying around, you don't care how many times you have to light it to get the That's a big thing on the whole, uh, again, back to like mystery shows where they're like, well, you're smoking a cigar because of the, it's like really built, burnt down in the match as opposed to like a cigarette which would be red really quick. Right. And then you've got the, you know, 
walking through the, the halls in the darkness with the last match and it's going to burn your fingers out. <laughs> and that's when the monster shows up. Basically what you're going to yeah. want to do is take the cigar, light the lighter, and you're going to just kind of char the end of it. Okay. You just want to get a little char. You want to make sure that it gets all the way around. Okay. See a little bit of smoke coming out. Right. And then you're going to take it to your mouth. You're going to roll it as you're lighting it. Okay. Oh, I always Reason. thought that was an affectation. That's that's for practicality purposes. Yes. Perfect. So you're going to light point. the end of it like this. You can see I've got some distance between me and the lighter. That's because you want the heat to light the cigar, not necessarily the fire. Ah, okay. okay. Just like a campfire, blowing on a little bit to make sure it catches. Now, as you can see on the edge over here, I've got the edge of the outside tobacco lit as well as the center. Right. That's important because as you as you draw your breath through the cigar, the outside edges will come in, so it'll keep the cigar lit. If you only light the inside, you'll canoe it, okay, where it's digging out the center, but the outside won't burn, and eventually you'll have a very bad tasting, very stinky cigar that you won't enjoy at all. Okay. And we're trying to make sure that this is enjoyable. At least not as horrible. <laughs> so why don't you give it a shot? <laughs> This gets hot really fast. All right, so I want to burn from the inside to the I outside around the... When I'm burning it, I get the entire edge all at once, mm -hmm. and then I just turn the cigar so that as I'm turning it, it gets the entire outer edge and the center at the same time. It's kind of like when you have a, a Zamboni taking the, uh, the ice rink, mm -hmm. how it goes around the outside, and then it starts going back and forth. Mm -hmm. You get in the outside, and at the same time, you're getting the inside of the cigar. Okay, so I'm starting out here. Right, and the oh. cigar lighter is backwards. Backwards? There you go. Oh. I'm already falling into the left-handed thing. <laughs> Push it all the way down until it clicks. There you oh. go. You can actually hear that butane going. Good. Turn a little bit further around. Good, that's enough char. Now you're going to take it up to your mouth. Keep the lighter in your hand. Oh. <laughs> and you're going to uh, start sucking it in as you light it, but you're going to turn it as you're sucking it in. It's a slight draw. You're only pulling it into your mouth, not into your throat. Light I have such it. a tiny inside of my mouth, though. Light it. All right. And then pull it up to always there and start turning it. There you go. Excellent. That's enough. Don't see now, me. good proper draw, once you get used to the fact that you've got smoke in your mouth, okay, is you're going to take it and you're going to... Take anything in? It's not like a puff, like you see somebody with a, with a uh, pipe. Or, yeah. Really good. That, it's not that, it's a long draw. Good. Am I getting anything in there? It doesn't seem like it is. You feel any smoke in your mouth at all? Because I'm seeing Barely. the smoke stop. It, from I feel, I feel, I, I thought I saw a little wisp. In the case of a tight draw, which is what that's called, take a back of a matchstick and just kind of push it down the center. Just a little bit, maybe a quarter to a half of an inch in, and try it again. Just having it this close is cool. Doesn't seem to have a taste. Turn it. Try 
right now. See by the outside, there um, it's doing, it's reacting to the breath. Right. I haven't thrown up yet, Jeff. Just letting you know. <laughs> And and Jeff is the uh, director. Jeff the is producer? our writer, director, producer, huh? and and to, uh, he's not the lead character. No, everything everything is concept. So. I'm definitely getting a reaction on this side, but I don't think you're drawing enough. Try to draw all the air that you're breathing through the cigar after having taken a full breath. Okay. Say that again. So, I'm taking a full breath. Ooh, suddenly feeling something in the back of my mouth there. Well, it's lit, and I'm holding it. I can put it in my mouth without freaking out. Um, obviously, I don't. Obviously, yeah. Like you say, I may have to come back a few times. <laughs> or let us dancer. I can cough if I need to. No. But no, I'm. Um, it, it doesn't feel like I'm getting anything inside. But by the same token, clearly I am because I can feel. I can see the outside reacting. Right. The, sm the and smoke. And from here, I can first lighting just a little bit. Um, as you can see from looking at the two cigars. My draw is a little bit better than yours. I think it's not the cigar. I think it's when you're pulling it in, you're not pulling it in as strong, which is fine. Well, I, I have this tiny interior, of interior of my mouth. Palate. I wasn't expected to live as an infant. And oh, wow. um, oh, because. You've never told me that before. Yeah, um, well, about one out of ten children are born with a cleft palate, so that their palate at the top of their mouth isn't completely sealed. Mm -hmm. But it's usually a little old. Mine was almost completely open. They were like, holy shit, I don't know what we can do with this kid. And uh, my grandmother prayed day and friggin' night, my dad's mom. And um, they were able to seal it up. But it's really, it's, it's very small. And I find that I can fit only about a little bit of liquid in my mouth at a time. I can take big bites of food. Mm -hmm. But if I were to find out the volume of my mouth, it's only like a tablespoon or so. So maybe I don't have the physical capacity of making a big draw. But believe me, what I'm doing right now is beyond anything I have ever would have conceived Oh, doing. I know. I was there for your first uh, taste of Guinness. <laughs> I don't mind Guinness. And, and I'm fine. I've had, at, what, with your dad's toast, was that could, bourbon or, or whiskey? Oh, yes. Every year at uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas, we raise a, a glass of uh, bourbon or whiskey. Mm. So I know I've had bourbon. I know I've had whiskey here. Because mm. sometimes uh, in certain, what else have we used? Uh, we've had Guinness. Uh, and mead. Guinness, mead, uh, wine, wine, um, not too thrilled with mold wine. wine, yeah, um, and whiskey. And I've tasted brandy, and like oh I said, yes, 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 uh, Irish whiskey and scotch. I, I've had scotch. Okay, I know I've had all sorts of different things here, <laughs> but like I say, I've never developed a taste to just like oh I got to go around and go out and buy myself a case or a bottle. Um, with with uh, with something like that, it's something yeah. I can do now and then. Uh, whereas this, you know, I, I I'm about to get a ticket to it, that's for sure. But um, it's something I can now know that I can do for a film. Well, you know, um, on that note on, on addiction mm -hmm. and cigar smoking, the addiction you get with cigar smoking is that you enjoy it. It's not a physical addiction where you absolutely have to have a cigar right now or you're going to have... So there's no actual nicotine in tobacco? Well, this kind of tobacco. tobacco has mm -hmm. nicotine in it naturally. Oh, okay. All right. So when they dry the leaves and they age them, the nicotine starts leaving those leaves. All right. So most cigarette makers will take nicotine, they'll drill it down, they'll make the cigarette, and they'll add more nicotine back into it because that's the addictive factor. They want you to have 
to have that smoke. Yeah. Okay? And not everybody's addicted to stuff. You know. Sure. Some people can put down a cigarette and never pick one up again like my dad did. That's how my mom was did. Yeah. But cigars are aged. So unless you get a, a, a freshly rolled, tobacco was uh, picked up last week from fields, you're not going to get a cigar that has a lot of nicotine in it. All right? So when people say, well, it's the equivalent of a pack of cigarettes, that's not exactly true. If you've got a good, good cigar that's been aged, you're not getting the nicotine of a pack of cigarettes. You're probably getting the smoke of a pack of cigarettes. And like we said earlier, while you're, you're not supposed quiet. to bring this into your lungs anyway. Exactly. Some does. Some smoke will get into your lungs. And that's just the matter of that, the fact that you're breathing, you know. But you're supposed to bring it into your mouth, roll it around, and blow it out. To me, it's a very relaxing and very uh, uh, almost sensual feeling. Yeah, yeah I, I understand. You know, look at the shape. No, we're not talking about I that. I wasn't it's making a Roy Johnson cigar. <laughs> Sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. <coughs> and that's not from the, the cigar. I'm just, uh, cool, the star. Yeah, hey, yeah. <laughs> Give it a good draw right now and see if it's still lit. Well, I can do it without coughing. I can say lines. <laughs> well, that's something. Now, when you tap a cigar and you start oh. getting some ash on here, some people prefer to see how long they can get the ash. Okay, It's an actual kind of a contest kind of thing. It's kind of, kind of cool to do that. <laughs> you know, like I said, I, I like to smoke cigars in the car sometimes, so I've gotten into the habit of always tapping, because otherwise you have ash in your face. <laughs> Not a good thing when you're driving you know, down the freeway. But you want to take the cigar, and you just want to roll it on the edge. Okay? The reason being is because you don't want to bam and lose your ash. Exactly. Right? You just want to roll it lightly. Because then you could lose the, the fire aspect if you bang. Well, you know, you're not going to lose the fire aspect unless you're really violent about tapping it. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's more of a style thing when it comes to smoking a cigar. And you, know, you don't go, wham, 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 wham. Yeah. You know, because you don't want to bend the cigar. You don't want to, you know, interrupt your enjoyment of that as much as possible. With a cigarette, you know, you sit there, you tap it, the ash falls off. But a cigarette also has a thinner paper around it as opposed to tobacco. So as it burns, it's going to continue burning until it's done burning, right? With a cigar, if you stop smoking it, it will go out. Oh, okay. So, one of the reasons why uh, you want to always, you know, make sure that you draw on it is to make sure it's always lit. Now, on set, I don't have any experience being on a movie set where somebody was smoking a cigar at the time. Mm -hmm. But, I would imagine you have a lot of takes. Take one, take two, take three. Cigar may be lit already, so you have to keep track of it. The length of it is going to be your continuation of the, of the scene. Continuity, you mean? Continuity, yeah. yeah. Um, Born with a cleft palate, I wasn't expected to live as an infant. And oh, wow. um, oh, because. You never told me that before. Yeah, um, well, about one out of ten children are born with a cleft palate, so that their palate, the top of their mouth isn't completely sealed. Mm -hmm. But it's usually a little old. Mine was almost completely open. They were like, holy shit, I don't know what we can do with this kid. And uh, my grandmother prayed day and friggin' night, my dad's mom. And um, they were able to seal it up. But it's really, it's, it's very small. And I find that I can fit only about a little bit of liquid in my mouth at a time. I can take big bites of food. Mm -hmm. But if I were to find out the volume of my mouth, it's only like a tablespoon or something. So maybe I don't have the physical capacity of making a big draw. But believe me, what I'm doing right now is beyond anything I have ever would have conceived. Oh, doing. I know. I was there for your first uh, taste of Guinness. <laughs> I don't like Guinness. And, and I'm fine. I've had, at, what, with your dad's toast, was that... Bourbon or, or whiskey? Oh yes, every year at uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas we raise a, a glass of uh, bourbon or whiskey. Mm. So I know I've had bourbon, I know I've had whiskey here, because mm -hmm. sometimes uh, in certain... What else have we used? Uh, we've had Guinness uh, and mead. Guinness, mead, uh, wine. Wine, um, not too thrilled with Mold wine. wine. Yeah. Um, 
and whiskey. And I've tasted brandy. And like oh, I say, yes, yes, yes. Uh, Irish whiskey and scotch. I, I've had scotch. Okay. I know I've had all sorts of different things here. <laughs> but like I say, I've never developed a taste to just like, oh, I got to go around and go out and buy myself a case or a bottle. Um, with with um, with something like that, it's something yeah. I can do now and then. Uh, whereas this, you know, I, I I'm about to get addicted to it, that's for sure. But um, it's something I can now know that I can do for a film. 